The methods we've been talking about, including t-tests, assume normal population distributions. And although we can show by simulation that that particular assumption, that the population distributions are normal, is not particularly important, still there are things that we can sometimes do to make our data look more normal so that we can better support the methods that we want to use. Even if a t-test does not rely that heavily on normality, if we can make the normality assumption more true, that can only be a good thing. Anytime your data consists of distances or times or money, any value that has to be positive, it's very likely that if you were to make a histogram of those values, it would look like this. In other words, it would be skewed toward the right. Now, as a side note, I've personally always found this term confusing. Because it looks to me like this is a distribution leaning toward the left. So the best way to remember this is just it's the opposite of the way it's leaning. This is a right skewed distribution, and a left skewed distribution would look like this. So right skewed distribution. This is going to happen, again, any time you have a variable, any time you have a value that has to be positive. Times, distances, money are the most common. Any time you know you have a variable that's time, distance, or money, you should assume until you look, that it's going to look like this. And it, unless you know otherwise, you should assume that you're going to have to deal with this non-normality in some particular way. There are lots of different things that we could do to a distribution like this to make it look norm more normal. We could take the reciprocal. So we could take one over each of these values, and it would look more normal. We could take the square root of each of these values, and they would likely look more normal. However, the suggestion I'm going to make is to take the log. If, these, if this is the histogram of your values of x, and we make a histogram of log x, it's going to look more normal. The high values are going to be squished in, the lower values are going to be squished less, and we're going to end up with a distribution that's somewhat symmetric and approximately normal, we hope. Why the log as opposed to the square root of the reciprocal? Those other transformations would work fine, likely, in terms of leading to a distribution that's normal. However, if we use the log transformation to make our distribution look normal, then it's possible to have a very nice interpretation of the results we got on the log scale back on the original scale. For example, suppose we're trying to learn about money. And in order to assume normality, we had to switch it to log money. And so we draw some conclusions about log dollars. If you have great intuition for what a difference in log dollars means, that's great. You can stop and think about the problem on the log dollar scale. However, many of us, definitely including me, do not have great intuition for values on a log scale. And the nice thing is that if you took the log to get normality as opposed to the square root of the reciprocal or something else, then even though you do the analysis on the log scale, it's possible to draw conclusions back on the regular dollar scale. And that is a really nice feature. What I'm going to do now is show you how it is that we interpret the results we get from a t-test comparing two groups on a log scale back on that original scale. Suppose I'm interested in comparing the incomes of two different populations. Perhaps I'm interested in comparing the incomes of people who live in the Midwest to the incomes of people who live in the Northeast of the United States. So Without even looking at the histograms of those values, if I have samples of people from each of those areas, I'm pretty sure that what I'm going to get is going to be a right skewed distribution because I know that income should not be negative. There are cases where it can be, but we'll put those aside. Income typically can't be negative. And there are going to be a lot of people with relatively small incomes, and then there's going to be some people with very, very large incomes. So without even drawing the picture, I'm pretty sure that it's going to help to take the log. Of course, I always should draw that picture. But even without drawing the picture of what the data actually looks like, I'm pretty sure that taking the log is going to help. Suppose that x refers to the incomes of people in the Midwest. Suppose that y refers to the incomes of people in the Northeast. If I'm doing a t-test, the quantity I'm interested in is the difference in means. And if I'm doing this on a log scale, then specifically, I'm talking about the difference in the mean log income of people in the Midwest minus the mean log income of people in the Northeast. If I'm comfortable talking about incomes on the log scale, this is sufficient. The estimate I get for this difference in mean log income can be reported. The confidence interval I get for this difference in mean log income can be reported. 
And that's fine. If I'm comfortable interpreting incomes in the log dollar scale, this is all totally fine. And you can stop there. And that, again, is fine. However, what I'm going to show you now is how we can use the fact that we did the t-test on the log scale to get back to a result on the original dollar scale, which I find more intuitive to think about. The first thing we're going to do is remember why we took the log at all. Why did we take the log? We took the log because we hoped that it would make the distribution look more normal. So again, our thought is that the original distribution looked something like this, and the new distribution of logged incomes looks something like this. If I think about the mean and the median of the original incomes, the median might be maybe around here somewhere. But because of these very high values on the right side, it's likely that the mean is somewhat higher. The mean is very influenced by outliers, by large or very large or very small values. However, if I have a distribution of logs that's approximately symmetric, which I hope I have because that's why I took the log, then because of that symmetry, the mean and the median should be very similar to each other. Again, before I took the log on the original income scale, I would not expect that to be the case. I would expect the mean to be much more influenced by these large values and the median to be lower. But after I take the log, I would expect those two values to be very similar to each other. So the first thing we're going to do is take advantage of that. I'm going to write that this quantity here is approximately equal to the following. These two curvy lines mean approximately equal. I'm going to replace each of the words mean here by the word median, because this is the mean of a log. This is the mean of a log. And if the logs are supposed to be normal, then the means of those logs should be approximately equal to the medians of those logs. This statement is not exactly true, but it's as true as the assumption that Taking the log achieved a symmetric distribution where the mean and the median were approximately equal, and that's something that we can check um, for a particular data set. Now what are we going to do? This next time, I'm not going to show you something that's approximately equal. I'm going to show you something that's actually equal. What am I going to do? How does the median of the log relate to the log of the median? How does the median of the log relate to the log of the median? So it turns out that it's OK to just flip these values, flip, flip these words, the log and the median. I'm going to try to convince you that that's true. What is the median? It's the middle of a bunch of numbers, right? So if I write down a bunch of numbers that might be in my distribution, and I write them down in order, the median is the middle one, right? The median is just the middle value, OK? What if I take the log? It turns out that taking the log does not change the order of the values, does not change the order of the values. So if I say, well, when I take the log of the first value, I get log of 2. That's still going to be the lowest of all my logged values. When I take the log of 3, that is going to be bigger than the log of 2. When I take the log of 7, that's going to be bigger than the log of 3. Taking the log of each value does not change the order of these data points. And so the median of these values, even without actually sitting down with a computer and figuring out what the log of 2, log of 3, log of 17 are, I still know that the median of these five values is this middle one. So what I've just demonstrated to you is that the median of the logs is equal to the log of the original median. Again here, the median of these five log values is log of 7. That's equal to the log of 7, which is the median value in the original data set. Because the log transformation does not change the order of your data points, it also doesn't change which data point is in the middle. Before or after taking the log, the point that represents the median is the same. The same thing would not be true of the mean, however. The log of the mean is not the same as the mean of the log. If I took the mean 
of these data points, they would, the mean would be very influenced by that number 1,000. But once I take the log, that log of 1,000 is not going to be nearly as much of an outlier as this point was an outlier for its data set. So it's not true that the log of the mean is equal to the mean of the log, but because the median is just the middle point, it is true that the log of the median is equal to the median of the log.